Welcome to Kew Bridge, the gateway to Chiswick. Today, we are taking a trip down memory lane. And I'll be blagging freebies on the high street, finding trousers that fit, and cooking eggs. Now, let's start the show. How much can you save by being loyal to shops and brands? Marcus hit the high street to find out. I'm on a mission to blag as much free food and groceries as possible. Now, I'm in a bit of a hurry because there's a time limit on the first one. I use Vodafone and they have a rewards scheme called Very Me and they often have flash offers and one of them is a free small coffee or any type of drink from Costa uh, up to the value of £2.75 and now not only is it time limited but there is a limit on the number available I checked just before I left home and the offer is still available so, excuse me while I hurry along to Costa. Let's see if I get my free coffee. And there we have it, success. A free small cappuccino worth £2.75. Not bad, just for using the Vodafone network. Well, that coffee really did go down very well indeed. Don't you think things taste even better when they're free? Well, I'm hungry now, and I've got a few points saved up at Subway. Now, depending how many you have, you can claim either a free drink, like a coffee or a tea. I've had that already, so I want something to eat. Um, snacks and subs, six inch and foot long subs are available, depending how many points you've got. Now, I know I've got 400 points on my card at the moment, and 200 points gets a snack. Let's see what I can bag. Well, I bagged a... Um, portion of hash browns worth £1.79. So I'm going to enjoy eating those now and see what else I can get in town. Now Boots offers what is probably the most generous loyalty scheme on the high street. You get four points for every pound you spend and you can spend those points however you like in from the smallest amount to the largest amount. You can save them up or just use them as you go along. Um, I know I've got 84 points on my card at the minute, so I can spend up to a maximum of 84 pence. Let's see what I can get for that. Well, I really maximised my points in there because not only did I get two bars of dairy milk caramel, which I love, for 35p, uh, so that was 35p each, and they were originally 75p each, so that was a saving of 80p. I used my points. I used 70 points for the total. So from Boots, that was a total saving today of £1.50. And more free food for me and Paul maybe too. When you're blagging, you also have to think ahead. Now Metro, which is a free newspaper, has got an offer for £5 off a £25 spend at Lidl. So I've been rather crafty and I've picked up four copies. So I could save £20 on a £100 spend. At Sainsbury's now and it's our final stop. Paul and I were here yesterday and we saved £10 off our shopping through a £5 gift card that we earned simply by uh, snapping receipts on the Shopix app and then £5 worth of Nectar Points. Now you can earn Nectar Points at Sainsbury's and various other places including uh, by uh, transferring your Avios miles from British Airways. So we really do um, save quite a lot using all these various techniques to earn the Nectar Points at Sainsbury's. Now while I was here yesterday, um, they gave me a coupon to get 170 uh, bonus points if I bought a certain um, brand of uh, Taylor's coffee it was. And another coffee that they didn't have yesterday had a points offer on it. They didn't have the coffee, um, but I'm hoping they have it today. But in any case, through the points that we earned yesterday, 800 and something, added on to what was still on the card, 
Um, I've got another five pounds to take off my shopping, so let's see what we can get. Well, I really did luck out at Sainsbury's. Not only did I find both the coffees, so I bagged all the extra points, um, I got by five pounds off my shopping, and with the extra points that I got on the coffee, it means that the next time I go, I can take another two pounds fifty off my shopping. Being loyal to shops really does add up because look at the savings I made today. Um, Marks and Spencers is another good one. Their Sparks card um, gives you freebies every now and again and money off certain products. Uh, you just need to check the app. Um, as well as Costa, there's Cafe Nero. For more free coffees, you get stamps for uh, every coffee that you buy. And Co-op's a good one. They um, send you uh, two offers every week for money off various things in your shopping. So be loyal. Well, you probably thought that was the end of the segment, and so did I. It's a few hours later the same day, and in my email I received a special offer from Fuller's, um, offering me one free pint of meantime beer if I buy a pint. So Paul and I have tracked to the Fuller's pub, just outside Oxbridge. Time for a pint. Well, if they've run out or if the coupons have already expired because so many people have taken up the offer, well, I'm going to be very, very disappointed. But uh, we're going to head in and see if we can get our, our blag, our free pint. Here we are at the Red Lion, just outside Oxbridge. We haven't been here for nearly two years. So they're welcoming us back with a free pint. That's nice of them, isn't it? And there we have it. Two for the price of one. Six pounds each they were. So only three pounds each as a saving of six pounds. Another freebie. Yay! Being a lady with a filler figure has always made buying clothes rather difficult. I have a wedding coming up and nothing fits. Let's hit the changing rooms. I've got a wedding coming up and nothing to wear. I threw out all my old clothes when I lost all that weight before lockdown. And unfortunately I put the weight back on again and now I don't have any clothes at least not clothes suitable for a wedding. So my mission today is to find something, anything, that fits. Oh look, M&S, surely they've got something. Let's check it out. Look, menswear. Go. I was able to fit into a 34 after I lost all the weight. Somehow I don't think we'll be even starting anywhere near that today. Let's start at a 38 and see how we get on. A 38 short. Let's see. Let's go and try it on. Bad news. They do fit me, but they're too tight, so we're going to have to have a look for an elasticated or the next size up. You found one then. Let's give this one a go. Second time lucky. Too baggy this time. So third time lucky. Let's try this one. Bye. Hey, 
hand. Can't even do the button. Is that it? There's got to be more in here. It's time to rethink things. Let's try the chinos on for size. What did you find? Well, at least the chinos fit. But my jacket is a kind of a, a greyish colour. I think that this might be a better match. So I'm going to give these a go. And it's the best that we're going to get in here. And at least I've got these as a standby. Okay, I think that's a success. Well, it's the biggest success to work we're going to have. So, well done. Thank you. Now, don't forget to subscribe. There's a lot you can do with eggs, as Marcus finds out. Before I start today's segment, I just want to say how sad Paul and I are that Ready Steady Cook has been cancelled. Um, we had a fantastic time on the show this year and we're very sorry to see it go. It had an absolutely fantastic team of people behind the scenes and in front of the camera, including the contestants of course. And um, yeah, it lasted two years in its current form with Rylan as as host and we were proud and privileged to be part of the series. Now I'm sure one of the things that Ready Steady Cook teaches us is that you know cooking doesn't have to be elaborate which leads me nicely on to today's segment because I've actually received an email, yes I have, from Alan in Largs and he says you should do a program on eggs, boiled, poached, fried, scrambled, and eggs with soldiers. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do today. Thanks, Alan. Let's get started. Right, so the first one we're going to do is the, probably the easiest one. We're going to boil an egg. Where are my eggs? What have you done with my eggs, my dear? He's hidden with them. <laughs> Here they are. Right, okay. So we're going to... Uh, Take our egg and just pop it into a pan of uh, warm water and get it boiling. Now, I'm sure everyone can boil an egg. Um, if you want it runny, about three to four minutes, I reckon. And um, if you want it a little bit harder, then six to eight, eight minutes. So we're just going to let that come to the boil and let it simmer away. Uh, in the meantime, come down here. 
and we will get our poached egg underway. Now, I didn't know how to do a poached egg, so I had to look up the details online. Um, so the first thing to do is you just don't pop it into, um, into a pan of water. First of all, crack it into a bowl. And I guess that is to ensure that we don't get any of the, the eggshell in it. So I've cracked it into a bowl. And then we have a pan of water which had been pre-boiled and it's to simmer. And you bring it up to um, simmering temperature and then you pour the egg in. Right, well I think our uh, water for the poached egg is coming along nicely now, so I'm just going to drop the egg into the into the water. And in the meantime, I've lost my eggs again, they're over here. Um, <clears throat> we'll get cracking on our fried egg. So here we are, I've got some oil which is just in a, in a pan here and it's on a very low heat. So we'll let that go. Keep on cooking there. Now I'm quite good at scrambled egg actually. So um, we're just going to use one one egg egg for this today. But you, you could use like a number of eggs for scram for scrambled eggs, depending on how many people you wanted to serve. So we will first of all crack our egg into a bowl, like so. And I've got a little bit of milk here. So I like to add a little bit of milk into the egg and then whisk it up. Now while I'm doing that, I'm going to get the pan on because rather than use oil, I like to use butter for my scrambled egg. Uh, so quite a nice uh, knob of butter there. Over here, I shall grab my very handy spatula, wooden one. So uh, we'll get whisking, and in the meantime, oh, I can see that the, the poached egg is coming along quite nicely. It should take about two to three minutes in the simmering water, actually. I should turn that down a bit now, because it's, it has, it's quite high, so I want that quite, quite a low heat, and the fried egg is absolutely fine. So we'll give that a whisk. And in the meantime, our butter is melting. Right, so let's pour it in. So we give the scrambled egg a nice bit of a stir around and turn the, the heat down. Now, at this stage, I need to turn off the heat for the poached egg. It has to stay now in the water for another seven to eight minutes, but not simmering. And in the meantime, I just grab another utensil. The fried egg is doing rather nicely, and you could just have it like this, um, sunny side up, or you could do it over, over easy, like this, which is what I'm going, going to do. But I'm actually going to turn the heat off on that one now, and I'm also going to turn the heat off on the boiled egg because the, there's enough water, um, enough heat in it to keep it going. The scrambled egg is just about done as well. Let's get the scrambled egg onto a plate. It doesn't take long at all. Um, so there we have our lovely scrambled egg. And you could serve that uh, on its own or with some tomatoes perhaps. The fried egg, let's get another plate.
There we go. Ooh, it looks as if it's just come out of a lovely greasy spoon cafeteria. Delicious. And we will get to the boiled egg in a moment. But Alan and Largs wanted soldiers with his boiled egg. Uh, if you don't know what soldiers is, it's basically toast cut into columns like that because they look like little soldiers and then you dip them into the egg. Now, I don't think there's going to be a lot of dipping going on today because of the time constraints and everything. Um, uh, there just it wasn't possible to do um, a, a runny a runny egg and do everything else at the same time. Um, however, we shall see how the egg, the boiled egg, turns out. So, I've got my another plate. I've got my lovely RNLI um, egg. What is it? An egg holder. <laughs> there we go. Whoa! It's hot. It's very hot. And we'll get a spoon. I like this spoon. And uh, crack it open like that. Ooh, actually, it's not runny, but it is a rather nice consistency there. It's not completely hard either. So that was that was in about five or six minutes. Okay, now normally we would leave. I'm running out of space. We would leave the poached egg for a little bit longer in the water, but I think for the sake of the show, um, we will take it out right now. Not all of it has held it together, I have to say. And I've, I've never really been a fan of, of poached, poached eggs when I've got them anywhere. Um, but uh, actually, I think that has turned out quite well. And I think there's got to be a taste test. Oh, and the soldiers are almost ready. So I think it's time for Paul to have his breakfast, don't you? Come on, Paul, breakfast is ready. Now, look at this, I've presented all the eggs on this rather lovely large plate. We've got our boiled egg, our scrambled, our fried, and our poached. And to go with it, we have some lovely soldiers and I just hope that Paul is going to leave a little for me. So come in my dear. Hello. Now tuck in and tell me what you think. Wow. And speak up, the microphone's behind you. Scrambled eggs are nice and juicy and they're not dry which is good. Hmm. Let's have a piece of toast. I don't like the egg over the runny, so I think this is a nice um, egg, I think. The fried egg. Did you try the poached, my dear? Was it this one? Yeah. Oh yeah, I did try that one. And the fried egg? So that was the poached that you liked. Yeah. It got a thumbs up. Mmm. Delicious? Delicious. There they are. The tennis courts. It's been years since I've been down here. I used to come here and play maybe once or twice a week. Kew Bridge is probably one of the noisiest bridges <laughs> I've ever um, I've ever been on and I can remember um, I think it was was it 2004 anyway I can remember standing on Kew Bridge watching the last three Concord aircraft fly in from New York to Heathrow they all flew in in sequence one after the other just a few minutes apart and uh, yeah it was quite an occasion loads of people standing 
with cameras just watching them all come in. I think John Collins was on board one of them. Um, right, we'll head into Chiswick now. I lived at three different places over about a period of five years in Chiswick and some good memories here and also when Paul moved over um, he lived in the third of the flats that I was in and that was his first place so that's the first place we're gonna we're gonna see on our trip down memory lane come on Paul That building dead centre straight ahead, the one that looks a bit like the Flatiron building in New York, but much smaller. Well, we lived on the uh, the middle floor. Um, that was the first place Paul lived when he moved over in 2006. And also that year, Rowan's Cafe and Bar is where we had our special breakfast on the day that we had our civil partnership. Well, it's to let, we could move back. It says a new luxury apartment. Hmm, not quite sure about that. It had quite a lot of work needed to be done when we were there, uh, such as the ceiling was caving in. Well, maybe if that's been fixed, it is a new luxury apartment. Let's hope so. That's Brentford Fountain Leisure Centre. Many's an afternoon I was in there on the rowing machine. Didn't really seem to do a lot of good though in the end. Where are we coming next to now? Well, we're still heading in towards Chiswick and we've just come from our old flat. But right over here is the second place that I lived in Chiswick. And it's right on the Chiswick roundabout. Um, can you believe how noisy it was? Here at Surrey Crescent. It's a little bit quieter down here. This is still, uh, we're on Chiswick, Chiswick High Road, and uh, it's a bit more leafy. And if we just swing over there, just to the left in the distance, you can see what is now the Clayton Hotel. It used to be called the Moran, and that is where we had our civil partnership reception way back in 2006. Right next to the hotel, is Thorny Hedge Road and this is the first place that I lived at not that building but it was one of the houses down there and I was there for about six months and during that time discovered it wasn't a very good place um, the apartment I was in well, it was more like a room with a little kitchenette and a shower because one day during a thunderstorm water started seeping down through the ceiling through the uh, the light the light socket the light fitting and sparks were flying not very good you were there for a little while Paul well, during a visit Distance. didn't you who's that who's talking kilometers. average pace 15 minutes this pub is called the Gunners Brain Eye but it used to be the John Bull it was the JB for a while we're very close to where I work at Teletext. Ah, Chiswick Park. Well, I worked here for several years for Teletext. And it really is, it's a fantastic place. Teletext was at Building 10. Well, they didn't have those uh, back in the day, and uh, I guess they've been put here since the the, the pandemic with the little meeting meeting places outside, got cushions and everything. It's just fantastic. Of any other places, um, you know, workplaces would think of something like like this, with the landscape around it and everything. You know, it's it's fantastic. It's the sort of place you'd actually want to come to, to work.
And here it is, Building 10. Teletext used to have its name on this board. And uh, but look at the names, some of the, the biggest names in media are here. CBS News, TBS, and the Pokemon Company, uh, 24 Live, View Entertainment. We were on the, uh, the second and, and third floors um, for a while, and then it was just we just down to the to the second floor. Lots of great memories around this place. What is that? Is it trout? Look at the size of them. <laughs> wow, look, they're enormous. Chiswick High Road, down by the shops and Connolly's Bar, the Irish pub, still going strong. I've always had a soft spot for, for Chiswick having lived here for so long. It's always nice to come back. Oh, I see the old pack horse. It's a pub we used to go to and it's, uh, it's a fuller's pub. And it's got um, a Thai restaurant, and that's where we're going to eat later tonight. So have you enjoyed your trip down memory lane in Chiswick today, Paul? Yeah, it was very, very... What is that word? Nostalgic. Oh yes. <laughs> well, when you can't remember the word, <laughs> you know that you're getting on in years a bit. And it has been a few years since we've been here, so... Uh, well, living here anyway. It's always nice to come back and it makes, it makes a nice day out. It certainly does. So we are walking along Turnham Green, right? Well, yes, Turnham this is Park. It is actually Turnham Green Park. There's a Turnham Green station as well. Um, but this is this park's also called Turnham Green. And uh, it's it right in the heart of Chiswick. The town centre is right there. So with the church in the background, I think uh, it's time to say goodbye and hope you've enjoyed today's show. There's been a uh, a few little bits and pieces. Um, I quite en enjoyed making all those eggs and I think you enjoyed that breakfast as well, didn't you, earlier on? Quite tasty. Okay, well, we'll get cracking with the next episode and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh,